And James has come to get baptized. Amen. Yeah. Come on, James. Courtney walked up to him and said, bro, you look like you're, you're, you're dressed for draft day. <laughs> and he goes, well, isn't that what this is? <laughs> you know, it's very exciting. Uh, James and, uh, and our families, uh, we, we ran into each other, literally, um, at, a, at the Ravenna Park in May of last year. And uh, they have this giant golden, no, German, German Shepherd that came out of nowhere and uh, grabbed Brinton's kite, tore it to shreds. <laughs> and uh, Brinton was torn to pieces. Oh my God. <laughs> he still cries every night about it. <laughs> but uh, James, very kind, comes over. He goes, we live right across the street. I've got three kites. I can just give your son one of them. I say, no, don't worry about it. Uh, but we started off a friendship and... Um, they came to uh, Addie's birthday party uh, shortly after that. They started coming out to church, and they've really been very committed to the church uh, since last year. Um, James and I, uh, you know, we had started doing Bible studies together at, at my house and at his house every Tuesday and every Thursday. And um, we got to a point where we were kind of studying the Bible, a, a number of different topics and everything. Um, but, you know, uh, we kind of needed to go to the next level. And I said, you know, James, just like football, because he was the captain of the football team at Stephen F. Austin in Texas. And I go, just like in football, you, you got to really get invested in this sort of training, and you got to get some skin in the game. And he goes, I get that. Okay, all right. And so we, we really uh, started meeting together more and talking even more. And, and then he challenged me and said, you got to get some skin in the game and, and come to the gym with me. Yeah. I said, all right, I'll train you physically, or he says, I'll train you physically if you keep training me spiritually. Wow. And a couple weeks ago, we did the, the, the light and darkness study. Yeah. And the next morning at the gym was the hardest workout we've ever done. <laughs> and I go, why was that? He goes, the harder you push me spiritually, the harder I'm going to push you physically. Yeah. Anyways, um, very excited for him. Um, his, his wife Jessica and the kids are so amazing, um, but uh, today we get to witness a true miracle, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I know God's going to move in a great way. So I'm going to let David share, and then uh, James is going to share. Just like Joel, uh, their interaction with uh, Jesse James, you know, uh, Margaret and I, the same thing at Ravenna Park right by our house. <laughs> um, we were, we we're just leaving the park. Um, as they were getting there, and I remember seeing, just, I just saw the back of uh, uh, James, and um, I, I remember, <laughs> remember the outfit that he was wearing. It, you know, one, one, I always joke with him very well. You know, there weren't, there were not a lot of you know African Americans, you know, in our neighborhood, and so I was like, oh, you know, that's interesting. And then he had, you know, it, was, it was sunny, rain, uh, sunny, and he had uh, rain boots on. So I, was like, I, remember, I was like, oh. <laughs> And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I was like, in my mind, I was like, I know I'm going to run into him again. Mm -hmm. uh, and sure enough, you know, they, they met the parlors and then we're able to meet again and we're able to make the connection. Oh, that was you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's just been cool to be able to, to, to get to know you, get to know your family. Uh, there, there's, um, there's just, just like we are mentioning, the study, there's so many people that you and your, your family are going to be able to help and, and, and speak to just from your background and everything you've been through. And... Uh, there's, uh, there's a scripture I wanted to read you, and it's in uh, Nehemiah chapter 4. It's a really inspiring scripture. Uh, uh, ever since I became, yeah, ever since I got married and especially had kids, uh, you know, as men, you know, you know we, we have to fight for our families. You know, there's a lot that, that's under attack, especially as Christian men, you know, uh, living in, in where, where we live. And so it can feel uh, daunting, you know, um, I really respect you, uh, you taking the, the leadership in taking hold of your family. Uh, Nehemiah is, is talking to uh, um, God's people, and a lot of them family family men. In Nehemiah chapter 4, uh, in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse, uh, verse 14, it says, After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and your homes. And the uh, reason I read this is the greatest uh, tool that we have when it comes to fighting for our families is that we have God on our side. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we fight this battle, know that obviously we have victory, but 
the greatest uh, way that you can fight for your family is being a man of God. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just commend you uh, just for, for taking that on and not yeah. shrinking back and really saying, yes. you know what, you know, um, I'm going to fight for my family and I'm going to fight with God um, and lead my family that way. So I just want to encourage you, like, yeah, this is the beginning. You're going to be able to uh, obviously be able to fight for your family and have victory, but be able to share and help so many other men and uh, families uh, from here on out. Yeah. to uplift me a little bit throughout this, but I am, I am excited today. I, I, I really feel like I want to kind of share my journey, um, where I started and, and, and what has brought me here in front of this podium today. Um, give you a little background about me and let you get to know me a little bit. You know, I'm from Dallas originally. Um, I'm the only child. Who, um, so, you know, for me, it was, it, was, it was crazy. Family was everything, right? My mom and dad were kind of everything in my life. Growing up, like I remember my dad, you know, he put on like face paint and like act like a ninja and we would like wrestle and he was just as much my dad as he was my brother, you know? Um, And uh, we were very bonded in that. And that was something that was just, you know, it it felt good, right? I could count and depend on it. And the other thing I could count on was the fact that Sundays were gonna be long. Sundays were a long day for us, man. We were that family that literally showed up first and then my dad was always the last person to leave. Like, he would just be in the parking lot talking and talking and talking <laughs> and just meeting with somebody else, you know. And, 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 and when we visit my grandmother's church, um, they would just give us the keys. They would be like, you open up. You know, you're going to get there so early. Like, just, just open the place up and we'll just get there when we get there. Um, but it's interesting, though. I think coming, you know, they say hindsight's 2020, right? Everybody's kind of experienced that. You know, you look back and you're like, huh. (laughs) You know, like, I didn't see that then, but now it's so clear. And the thing that I realized is, is growing up, we were actually just Sunday Christians, right? We, we We would maximize Sunday as best as possible, make it as long as we could, but... But Monday through Saturday, we were kind of living in the world. Wow. And, and, you know, it makes sense that we had the hardships that we had. You know, my dad, he struggled with some infidelity, right? And, and some lust. And, and, and it led to him and my mom getting a divorce. Um, and that affected me. It, 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 I couldn't understand. How are we going to church? How are we doing all these things? You know, I, we're singing and we're dressing to the nines and, you know, this, that, and the other. But, but at the same time, we're, you know, these, these other things are happening in our life and, and it's fractured our relationship and it fractured my faith. You know, you look up to your parents and, and, and you're, you're, you're leaning on them for, for direction and, 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 and lo and behold, their faith is fractured too. Um, you know, for me, man, uh, I realized something about, you know, Sunday Christians and I, and I, and I realized that, you know, going to church on Sunday doesn't make you a Christian, right? Yeah. You know, no more than standing in a car makes you a gar- uh, standing in a garage makes you a car. Right. You know, like, like you've got to do more than that. Right? I mean, it just it just doesn't make sense, man. Right? Um, and 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 you know, Joel Joel listens to me all the time. I, I'm always listening to podcasts and I'm reading things and you know things will jump out to me, man. And and uh, and they'll kind of just sit with me. And one of the things that that I read was. There was a poll that was done, both believers and non-believers. They polled them. They asked them two questions. The two questions, the first question was, um, what problems do you have with Jesus? And both believers and non-believers almost unanimously said, nothing. I don't have any problem with Jesus. From what I read and from what I heard, what people say, Jesus was great, didn't do anything wrong, lived a selfless life. I um, don't have any problems with Jesus. The second question they asked was, you know, well, what problems do you have with the church? You know, why aren't you more involved? Why isn't your faith stronger? Um, if, 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 if the first question you answered is the way that it is, then, then what's, what's, what's your answer for the second question? And you know what their answer was? The problem with the church is Christians, right? There's a lot of Sunday Christians, right? 
And we kind of have this cloth on that, you know, we look the part, but yet we're not representing it. You know, we're, we're, we, we have, you know, we're going to church and, 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 and other people are seeing it, but we aren't really who we say we are. Um, I think it's the normal part of us as Christians to always look for a shortcut. Uh, or not as a Christian, it's just as, as, as people. Yeah. To always look for a shortcut, man. And I fell victim to that, too. I became a Sunday Christian because I felt like I was raised a Sunday Christian. And that was where my faith started. It was as, just as a Sunday Christian. I thought that, man, if I, if I showed out on Sunday, mm. I could receive all the benefits of being a wow. Christian. But yet live the world on Monday through Saturday, man, and just enjoy life, oh, right? Mm. Um, and, and it's funny how God will just teach you a lesson. Ooh, man, he will just teach you a lesson and, 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 and he'll set you straight. You know, they say that the Bible will keep you away from sin. But sin will keep you away from the Bible. Yeah. You know, and, and it's something about if you're only going on Sundays, man, that the devil will take that contract, right? You mean I tell me I get six days with you and the Lord gets one? I'll take those odds. Um, you know, for me, um, I felt like God he has a sense of humor and he also doesn't. You know, I think he had to teach me in life. And it's so crazy when you're living in the world, especially, you know, me being a Sunday Christian, I, I felt like nothing was ever enough. And God was blessing me all the time. He was giving me all these blessings, man, all these things to be thankful for. I only played two years of high school football, and I ended up getting four full Division I scholarships to play at these amazing universities. And, and, and I ended up choosing Stephen F. Austin. I had a full ride, full room and board, wow. full tuition. Um, they were going to pay for you know, all, of, all of my nursing degrees and all of that. Wow. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so blessed. And, but I, I wasn't satisfied. Because right? I was living in the world. And the day before I was supposed to leave for Stephen F. Austin to report for two days, I, 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 was, I was greedy. And a buddy of mine who worked at Walmart was like, oh, you need a few things? Like, you know, you want some cool things, some electronics, some CDs, a CD player, you know, blah, blah, come, I'm working, man, I'll hook you up, right? And uh, so I go over there and grab a few things that I don't even need, right? I've already got the biggest blessing. I've got a full scholarship, right? And, uh, and I grab all these things and I put it in the cart, man. He rings one of them up and he puts the rest in the bag and I walk out. And as soon as I get out of the store, somebody says freeze. And I get handcuffed, man, and taken to jail, right? And, and it was because I was greedy. I, I didn't even need that stuff, right? They took it from me anyways. And uh, I remember praying in jail and I was like, God, like, how, how could you let this happen to me? Like, you know. And, and, and his response was so clear. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, if you were following my sword, if you were following my direction, you wouldn't put yourself in that situation. Right. You thought you could live on just Sundays, man, but it's every day. Right. You made this mistake on a Thursday. <laughs> going to set you back, and I'm not going to save you from that. These are your choices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, you know what? I get it. So fast forward. One, I get accepted into anesthesia school, and the day before I'm about to leave to the University of Miami, I go, and uh, I'm hanging out with all my coworkers from the ICU, and um, and we're at the bowling alley. They're, they're sending me like a farewell, like a go away party, you know, and everybody's celebrating. We're having a good time, bowling, drinking, having some fun. And the night ends, it's about midnight, and we're all like, all right, we're gonna head home, we're gonna go home. And, uh, and we all get in our cars and we go our separate ways, and, and I'm not but two streets over, and I see flashing lights behind me, right? Oh. So I was like, oh man. So he comes up and he was like, you know, license registration, have you been drinking? Yeah, I've had a few drinks. So I get out of the car. So I get out of the car, it gives me this 10 minute full fledged sobriety test, right? Walk the line, count this and do that and blah, blah, blah. And I'm nervous, man. And, and, and he goes back to his car and then he comes back and he says, you know, you know, you're blessed. 
He was like, uh, he was like, you, you, you drank, but you were responsible. It's like, you passed everything, you're good to go. He was like, I think some of your coworkers aren't as lucky. It's like, you just arrested two. They're getting booked for DWIs. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it's so crazy, man, because I had this parallel in my mind that, oh my goodness, um, had I not been taught that lesson from God right before going to undergrad, you know, now that the stakes are even higher, man, I would have messed up here. I would have been reckless here. And God gave me this tough love. You know, love can be tough sometimes. He gave me this tough love early on, man, to save me from myself here so that I could receive something that was even greater later. I didn't lose my scholarship and I was blessed for that, but I would have lost my license had I gotten, had I gotten arrested. It would, have, it would have messed up my livelihood, my earning potential. I wouldn't have been able, school would have, would have immediately dismissed me. Um, and, and you, you look back and in hindsight, you say, oh my gosh, thank you. He's always been there. Oh, yeah. Um, I say all this to give you some insight on the Chinese bamboo plant, if you will. <laughs> okay. Bring it home. All right. Bring it home. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up in a nice little bow. Come on, James. You know, the Chinese bamboo plant is interesting, man. And I heard this story. This motivational speaker spoke this, man. And he related it to something else. But for me, it, it related to my, my, my final journey to, to bring me to this point and how I got here. Um, the Chinese bamboo plant is interesting, man, because if you take the seed and you put it in the ground, it needs a lot of attention from that point. It needs great soil. The soil needs to drain properly. It needs to have... Um, sunlight, it needs to have nutrients, it needs to be watered constantly. And if you do all that, and you continue to do all that every single day, in five years you'll get a seedling. Whoa. <laughs> it takes five years for that seed to finally break the surface, man, and become a seedling. And then, after five years, and now that it's become a seedling, in five weeks, it grows 90 feet tall. Whoa. Mm -hmm. 90 feet tall in five weeks. So the question I have for you guys is, does it grow 90 feet in five weeks or does it grow 90 feet in five years? Mm -hmm. It's obvious, right? It grows 90 feet in five years. Mm -hmm. Because at any point in time, had it not received that water, Mm -hmm. Had it not received that nurture, that, that nutrients, had it not received that sunshine, it would have died in the soil. Right? Right. And it never would have become a seedling, and it never would have had the chance to reach its full potential. Yeah. You know, and the thing that I'm so thankful for, man, is, um, you know, we're, we're, we're more complex than a seed. I think it takes us a little bit more, a little bit more time in the ground yeah. to, 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 to receive that nutrients and to yeah, constantly right. be watered. But, mm -hmm. But over 20 years or 30 years or whatever, the only thing that's going to be a definite thing that's always there for you is God, right? He's right. always watering you. He's always giving you that nutrients, yeah. man. He's yeah. always providing for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the parallel that happened was, and Joel kind of touched on this, man. Um, you know, we started, we started these Bible studies uh, um, with Joel on Tuesdays and Thursdays, man, and, and I was... I was, I was trying to get more serious, but I was still kind of going through the motions. And, uh, and, and we got to a point where Joel was like, hey, we're gonna take this next step, man. Like, you're here, you're like, you know, you're, you're coming, you're showing up, you know, but, but there's more for you to do. There's more that can be done. Like, you gotta get some skin in the game. And he's like, man, I got some real Bible studies for you, man, and it's gonna take about five weeks. Five weeks of these, these, these intense Bible studies, man. And and I wonder I'm wondering if, if 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 you're down for that if you're gonna if you're gonna roll through that with me let's 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 come together on that and 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 at that point man I really got some skin in the game and I became that bamboo plant mm -hmm. in those five weeks man I'm standing before you man and I feel 90 feet tall right <laughs> and, and, been amazing just to feel this growth to, to to have grown so much man and to feel so empowered and so strong um you know i think this journey isn't supposed to be easy 
right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they say the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory, right? right. Mm -hmm. It's got to be hard. It's not right. supposed to be easy, man. And, and, and people are going to try to deny you. People are going to try to talk you out of things, man. But stay steadfast. Stay strong. On, you know, James. if you're standing there today, man, and, 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 and you feel like something's holding you back, maybe it's something you've done, maybe something you feel guilty about, know that you can never fall below God's grace. Mm -hmm. It's impossible, man. He is always there. His arms are always open, man, and he loves you so much. Absolutely. I have a challenge for you today. Okay. And it's the two-week challenge, right? <laughs> mm. So I'm going to hit some science. And the science behind it is it takes approximately two weeks to create a habit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mentally, man, our, our brain can get rewired in two weeks to where something that was hard to do at first becomes a lot easier in two weeks if you can That's just it. hold on. And anybody can hold on for two weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you start going to the gym. If you can just do two weeks and just stay steadfast, man, before you know it, it gets a little bit easier. All right. um, um, and the same thing with your faith. I, I challenge you, man, if you're on your seat, if you're, if you're contemplating something, if you're not sure, but you, you're here. So there's something going for you, right? Like you're, you're, there's a part of your interest, there's a part of your mind that, that is curious. I challenge you for the next two weeks, find some of these disciples in this church, ask them, reach out to them, ask for some more Bible study, ask for some Bible talk, ask for them to come over and, and, and just meet with you. Ask, open your heart, man, and, and allow them in. And for two weeks, man, watch the change that can happen. Because in five weeks, you can be standing here just like me. Come on. Come on. That's it, man. Jesus is the Son of God that Come died on. on the cross for your sins, and God rose him from the dead three days later, and now he's seated at the right hand of God? Yes. <laughs> and what's your good confession? Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and Holy Spirit, all your sins will be forgiven and you'll be added to God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. 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 Amen.